Rick Hirsch, welcome to a book too. Um, I'm not going to be talking about a Corona Samizdat book because I just picked up a book, three books actually, but uh, I got them yesterday, I believe, from uh, Betimes Books of Dublin. And I went through their list and, you know, I have to guess. Um, I decided I uh, didn't want to buy uh, a detective novel. They have a lot of them, but uh, the reason is because I I, I don't like uh, detective novels that come in a series, and their biggest seller, I think, or their best one, comes in a series. I may get, I may take a look at it and see how it's managed. Um, I did, but I didn't really want uh, a genre book at all. I found that there was this interesting um, guy named, uh, in seeming, uh, well, we'll find out, writer named Richard Kalich from um, New York, and they have a trilogy called the, uh, uh, um, I don't know, something Manhattan or New York trilogy. Um, it's not Paul Oster. Anyway, uh, I also wanted to buy a book by an Irish author, and uh, I chose Killarney Blues by Colin O'Sullivan, but um, I did ask uh, um, uh, the the uh, proprietor of the press, um, <clears throat> and and she recommended uh, um, not Killarney Blues by Colin O'Sullivan, but um, this one, The Starved Lover Sings, and I didn't. I I just said, oh, okay. And I didn't look into it. And now the, the, the guy is Irish, Colin O'Sullivan, but he lives in Japan. And, well, it's a book about Japan. Damn, didn't get the Irish book. And on top of that, it's a kind of book I would never buy because uh, I don't like uh, dystopian novels, uh, futuristic novels, science fiction novels. Um, and I can't exactly... Um, express why. I don't know exactly why myself. I don't know what I'm looking for other than language and uh, something that, that, that hits me about the human um, or the planet or the history or, you know, something that, that really strikes me. The great books um, in my life have been uh, quite varied. Blaise Sandrar really struck me. Um, at, uh, Henry Miller did. Lately, Chandler Brossard has. Um, I found myself more and more reading my own books, something I never did until 2017. And then I reread the first novel I had published, and I was surprised. It was better than I thought it would be. But uh, I have a hard time now. I've been reading Thomas Pynchon's Against the Day, and I'm against a lot of that book. Uh, uh, he's, he's a great writer, and when he's writing in that book, there's a, there are sections about um, anarchists in the 90s and aughts and probably up to World War I. And those sections I like quite a bit. Um, but there are others that are more, um, uh, more or less um, fantasy, I suppose, of some kind. And um, I just, um, I, I completely lose interest. And it's certainly uh, my, uh, my tendency, my, my, my feelings and so on. Um, but, you know, when, when someone recommends a book to you, and you have it in your hand, I think the best thing to do, if I, if I would have set it aside and started to write in on the Kalich books, which were the first ones I chose, uh, I may never have read this. So I thought, now let, let me, you know, let, let's give a little respect to the um, publisher and, uh, and also the author. Um, and I read the book in two days, uh, and it is extremely good extremely good. And I suppose one of the reasons that uh, um, it um, it's 
dystopian futuristic nature is because um, the way the book is written, what happened, maybe I should tell you a little bit about the book itself. It's in Japan in the near dystopian future. Japan has been wiped out um, in large part by tsunamis and earthquakes and 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 it's toxic in the small towns and a few big cities remain but it's not a powerhouse the powerhouse is a, a, a an economic giant um, conglomeration of the koreas and china um, but that is not really so important that's maybe backdrop and, and it provides a, a very uh, uh, stark environment that once I began reading the book, this stark small town environment could have been the setting for uh, a noir novel, um, contemporary. And the human elements, the human emotions were um, contemporary to me. They, they, there was nothing um, of fantasy about it. it there's a, a man who um, teaches physical education and referees football games on weekends. And uh, he had lost his daughter in the last big um, earthquake and tsunami. And his wife was nothing but a heap, a heap. She lays in bed and that's all. And luckily she has a sister who comes over and takes care of him, um, you know, providing food and, and watches um, the wife and stays with her, talks to her and, you know, but the wife just never leaves her bed and she's wasting away. And uh, he just goes to work. He's very unhappy. Uh, at night, he pretends to, he goes out and he walks and he pretends to uh, look for his daughter because she was washed away. And um, there is no real hope of finding her, but it's something to do. And in his uh, wanderings, he often comes across a prostitute from probably Poland uh, maybe the Czech Republic, who has remained behind in this town that's half depopulated or more, half or more of the buildings are gone, and um, the school that once had 400 students now has um, 60 or something like that. And um, I, I was about on page uh, 97... When I said to myself, you know, th this is really, a, really, a, a really good book. And so I wrote something down. And that became the page on which I wrote all my notes. And uh, um, so what I had to say was that um, why I like the writing so much. Um, first of all, it was intensely about this one man and uh um you get the 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 feeling that it's all very real that he's real that he's true that he's honest that his pain is pain and um you know the um he does have um lust and uh but it, it it's it's very weak lust his um wife is wasting away. He never talks to her. She won't talk. He kisses her goodnight every night. But the sister is um, very sexy, or pretty sexy. And, and, and he's attracted to her, and he talks about that. Uh, and there's a prostitute he runs into at night the, uh, and that I just mentioned, and she's uh, attractive. And uh, his uh, colleague at the school also teaches P.E. is a very sexy woman, and, and he talks about his lust, but there's something 
we know throughout, I think, there's, uh, I knew, that, you know, there was not, there was not anything um, um, powerful about his lust. His lust was, was a, a shadow lust or something like that. Meanwhile, there are these two girls um, who are um, coming of age, 16, and they decide that he is the one. I'll let you decide what that means. Um, but I don't want to give too much away. There's a, there are a lot of wolves, um, a kind of wolf that was scarce or rare or, or actually maybe even is um, extinct, comes back and surrounds a town and, 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 you know, there's so much, um, death and, 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 uh, carcass, um, to the novel. And, you know, and of course, when, when, uh, um, a tsunami hits, leaves a lot behind and then they come down from wherever they were and they multiply and they're all around the town, not in the town, but all around the town. And that comes into play in the book. But here are the things that I wrote, um, and I'll see if I can... I said, I said contemporary dystopia, um, yet these are the, the voices of today. I guess I've already said that. Um, and that... So I, I didn't... There, there is not... What, what, what's interesting is that what he writes about, when he's specific about what is changed it's basically what's lacking there are things that are futuristic but they don't work and so he could if you, you strip away all the all of the um the gadgetry which is produced by the uh china korea um conglomerate economic center um, but doesn't work very well in the small city. And uh, well, if you if you, you strip all that stuff away, it's not talked about much. Um, there are not good connections. Um, anyway, all of, all of that stuff. If you if you strip it away, and just just de describe the people and how they've become, what it seems to me you get is people who are as they are today if you just suddenly took away their gadgets. And that's the kind of uh, um, um, deterioration of mind and soul that you would find here in this book. So it seemed to me. Um, his writing is is wonderful in that um, he he writes with a sort of uh, I would call a rough hewn poetry, but included in that is, he makes surprising word choices. At one point he says about someone just simply she wanes, you know, and and it it, it works. It makes sense there. Um, and he knows how to use repetition. He actually rhymes at, at times, but it's not... Um, rhyming in, in fiction is something that's generally more playful than it comes across here. There's something, something uh, of a dark whimsy to it in this book. It's a very dark book. Um, is... Uh, Cleverness is something that he doesn't overdo. I don't know what is overdoing cleverness, but you know he 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 does it with ease. Like uh, 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 he says at one point, nature rather than stricture. In describing you know where you know he's playing off nature and nurture, and and it works, and he also knows um, how to use cadence. He uses repetition um, in one long paragraph, the word pain. And, and if you know how to do that, it's very funny because I, I've had um, 
uh, uh, criticism from a professional in the past. It was Dennis Johnson. And um, the word that I was using, like a drumbeat, as he uses the word pain in here, was down. And uh, it was a book of uh, what you would call, um, mm, what is that Greek word, uh, katabasis? It was a work um, in which the, the central philosophical notion involved katabasis. In other words, uh, in the Hindu parlance, perhaps, would be um, resacralization and resacralizing the profane. And I was using the word down in this one um, paragraph with cadence, which is something he can do too. And, uh, um, and so uh, Dennis Johnson would say, you should try using different words instead of repeating the same word. In other words, he hadn't really read it. Um, and what I'm very happy about is that I, I, for somehow, for some reason, I made the choice to read this book first, and it's fucking great. It really is. Um, you don't know what's going to happen. You do um, uh, become deeply involved. You are given uh, a number of. Uh, situations to expect. There's a, a small, pretty small cast of characters uh, that are very well used. And, uh, um, and, and you don't know, like, for instance, the, the very fact of, that the main character, who's uh, called uh, Tombo, which is a uh, um, dragonfly, because he's got bug eyes. And, uh, um, you know, that's something that kids call him and stuff like that. Um, he's an unhappy guy. And um, this is a, a lament. But it's a lament for humanity. It, it is not necessarily... Uh, it's not an allegory, necessarily. But it does have allegorical effects. Um, it is... I think impossible to to um, read this and become absorbed in it and get a kick out of its um, uh, futuristic antics um, because they they don't really mean anything. What means something is the 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 is human loss. Um, human suffering um, to some degree, but very little actually, the power of nature, because that's all to set up the situation in which the story takes place. Um, and it the focus is very much on the narrator, um, the man who sings, the starved lover who sings, and, um, you know, there, you, as you go through the, the book, uh, early on, you meet these two uh, uh, blossoming and, and wacky young girls. And, and you're pretty sure that they're going to play a very different role than what they do play. And you're, you're wondering throughout about this starved lover uh, because he he does have several people um, he's lusting after, but he doesn't do anything with them. And then, of course, you have his wife, and you give up on her. They're, you know, she's finished. And um, so the only thing that can ma really make sense, you don't, you know, he's not good. You know, he's a good guy. As bad as he thinks he is, as bad as he says he is, you 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 know he isn't, because there's such a, a raw honesty to what he talks about, and that is heightened by all the writing uh, matters that I I, I mentioned. Um, it's an extremely interesting and and um, well. He's a great writer. 
um, completely in control. Um, you, you, you just, you know, uh, you know, you know that, um, that you, you have to yield to the book early on that whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You can't help but think about, well, will it be this? Will it be that? It can't be that. That would be, you know, but, uh, even, even at the end, there, there are many things that, uh, would be easy to spoil if I go on much longer. But I can say that uh, uh, he telegraphs um, one thing that could be a surprise without the fact that he telegraphs it. But I believe that he telegraphs it because using it as a surprise would cheapen it. And uh, it's an important thing in the book, and it's something that um, a reader um, working hard to figure out what's going to happen would probably guess is a possibility, but um, you've hopefully yielded to him and, and to his, uh, he, he, you know, I, I, I can't uh, um, compare him to anyone else. He, he's got his own voice, but he's like David Peace in that his own voice is is um, is a kind of uh, an odd prose poetry that that flings itself with with some awkward force forward and uh, despite expectations and so on they have that in common. It, you, you, you know, they, you don't, they're not that similar to each other, but what distinguishes them from most writers um, is, and makes them unique, is a similar sort of thing. Um, and interestingly, the latest David Peace I've read were two novels that take place in Japan. Um, also, I had a, um, I had a very distinct um, feeling. I've read a lot of Japanese fiction over the years. It's been a while, um, but I felt that this was a Japanese writer, um, and uh, I assumed early on that um, you know it's Colin O'Sullivan. He lives in. Japan, I think it says he has a family there, and uh, um, maybe it doesn't say that. I don't know. But he lives in the north of Japan, and um, I thought I read that he had a family there. But anyway, the, you, you, we make assumptions. I assume it's a guy who uh, married a Japanese woman and stayed in Japan. Um and uh, so naturally, when I start reading his book, I'm thinking that the narrator is, is English. Now, I don't know how long it was, probably longer than it should have been, before I, I figured out he, he's not, he's not, he's Japanese. And, uh, um, and it did have uh, something that, that uh, for me at the moment is ineffable, uh, Japanese about it. Um, but it, it, it's a, a very stunning, powerful book, and not because of what happens and uh, um, how, how uh, not because of any tricks, but it's just a powerful, uh, he created a situation, created a voice and 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 took it where he wanted to take it he gave you know the 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 background that he needed uh, to do what he his character would do and say and think and it was ex so such a just a p very powerful portrait of um futility and uh 
I think that, uh, I guess the rest of what I have to say is read small press literature. You know, who is he? He's Colin O'Sullivan. Um, who's Colin O'Sullivan? You know, we're, we're, uh, um, uh, we, we Instagram people. I'm an Instagram person. I found a bunch of great readers and, but the great readers are reading in common the great novels that, uh, people like Stephen Moore have championed. Um, and, uh, you know, and there, there are the famous ones like David Foster Wallace. There are the ones like Stanley Elkin, who is less famous, and uh, Don DeLillo. And, and that's become a sort of a, like a, a sub-mainstream, uh, mainstream, you know. Not, not enough people to, to call them mainstream, but that, you know, they, they're, they have, there are all these people in common. How many people have read Colin O'Sullivan? Um, you know, as Seshu Foster, a small press author who um, I hope many of you have heard of, he has a great book coming out in April called The East Los Angeles Air, or East Los Angeles Dirigible Air Transport Lines. Um, the history of the dirigible company in East LA, and it, it's going to be a wild ride. Um, I've seen bits of it, and and uh, that's from uh, um, uh, City Lights Press. But look into some of these people. Talk to the people at the press and find out what is available and what might appeal to you because <clears throat> I'm reading, uh, um, one of the, um, uh, I said David Foster Wallace. Well, no, Thomas Pinchon is far uh, better known probably than David Foster Wallace and he can get anything he wants published and they're all giant books and he's an extremely talented writer, but, uh, I already am pretty sure that um, this book will be more of the fabric of my my literary memory than Against the Day by Thomas Pinchon. Um, take that statement for what it's worth, um, but there's a great deal of talent out there and Colin O'Sullivan uh, is definitely someone worth reading. And I hope that uh, um, somebody watches this and says, okay, I'll, I'll buy it. It wasn't that expensive. Although for me, a poor man, everything's expensive. But I bought it, and am I glad I did. And thank you, Svetlana of uh, Betimes Books, for convincing me to read this one instead of the other one, which I'll probably end up reading as soon as I can afford to buy another one, because this is definitely a writer to watch for his next ones, read his old ones, that kind of thing. Thanks. Rick Harsh, um, you can skip this ad in three days. <laughs>